All right, guys. It is another gray, gloomy day here in the end times. Sitting here in the paradise of Charlottesville, Virginia. And, uh, damn it, on this gloomy, what is it now, uh, Wednesday, September 12th, 2018. And me and the little dog, who has been to the vet, and he's already is pretty much healed of his kennel cough. Uh, we need to head to North Carolina. I'm probably one of the few people on the planet heading to North Carolina today to bring you news of the, uh, yes, bring you news of the fizzle of the century. We shall see about that. But before I go, just do what I do every day, and that's turn on to the mainstream media to see if there's any other stories on the planet today other than the Hurricane Florence story. And unbelievably, you know, after you get through the first half of the total stories on the mainstream media about Hurricane Florence, we actually have a, uh, a climate change meltdown roundup rant. So. I probably only have time to do the climate change meltdown roundup rant. Not sure there'll be a part two. But let's dive into the non Florence news of the day. Many versions of this story, just going to look in at it a couple. This is the French news service. <clears throat> climate extremes, key driver behind rising global hunger. And uh, I do not have my no shit Sherlock button, unfortunately. All right. <clears throat> Extreme weather events were a leading cause of global hunger rising last year, with women, babies, and old people particularly vulnerable to the worsening trend, a UN report said Tuesday. Increasingly frequent shocks such as extreme rainfall or at temperatures as well as drought storms and floods helped push the number of undernourished people to 821 million last year. That figure equivalent to about one in nine people globally was up from, was up from 804 million in 2016. Uh, according to this UN report, the number of people who suffer from hunger has been growing over the past three years, returning to levels that prevailed a decade ago. Equally of concern is that 22% of children under the age of five are affected by stunting, stunting in 2017. And wow, no shit, Sherlock. Uh, Africa is the region where climate shocks and stressors had the biggest impact on acute food insecurity and malnutrition, affecting 59 million people in 24 countries and requiring urgent humanitarian action. Yes, uh, let's see, I don't think you will ever see the word overpopulation anywhere, so I'm a little confused. Okay, they said 59 million people in Africa are suffering acute food insecurity, and then, so that was 59 million. And then we go over to the website All Africa, and we see Africa, global hunger continues to rise with Africa the worst hit. The population of hungry people is rising across the world with more than a quarter of them in Africa. Out of the 821 million people who faced food shortages last year, 257 million were found in Africa. So I'm already confused, guys. 
one article saying 59 million, right next to it, 257 million in Africa. And uh, I don't even know. Uh, let's see. Yes. Uh, and they talk about stunted children with Nigeria as the highest prevalence of stunted under five children with about 17 million Nigerian babies being, you know, turned into midgets, essentially. I anyway, guys, uh, we got to move on. As a lot of what we're talking about is our friends in the United Nations. Okay, next UN report. UN sees 70% chance, 70% chance of El Nino event this year. An El Nino event that could disrupt global weather is likely by the end of what has already been a hot year, the UN said yesterday. The World Meteorological Organization forecast a 70% chance of an El Nino developing. Uh, we shall see. Uh, the organization sees increased odds of higher surface temperatures in most of Asia Pacific, Europe, North America, Africa, and along much of South America's coastland. Yes. Uh, and 2018, according to uh, the UN, 2018 is on track to be one of the warmest years on record, no shit Sherlock, after especially high temperatures in July and August across several parts of the world. I would be burning up my no shit Sherlock button. This uh, today in the mainstream media. Okay, <clears throat> what does climate change mean for wage slaves? Climate change is becoming a major <coughs> workplace hazard. <clears throat> Again, no shit, Sherlock. <clears throat> we have a hit of some. <clears throat> I, I think Sancho has given me his kennel cough. An unprecedented four firefighters have died battling historic blazes in the American West this summer. That is unadulterated horseshit. Right off the top, I remember, <clears throat> good Lord, 20 years ago, um, being in Colorado by this big fire where 19 firefighters died. So this right off the top. This is unadulterated fucking horseshit. An unprecedented four firefighters have died battling historic blazes in the American West this summer. The number of farm workers suffering from heat exhaustion is set to surge as temperatures rise, as hundreds already die from inadequate protections. The Federal Emergency Management Agency is dangerously understaffed in the middle of another potentially dangerous hurricane season. As rising global temperatures and changing extreme weather patterns reshape the conception of normal, yeah right, no one will be more affected than the workers who are sent out to the front lines of climate change. I know you're not licking your dick over there. That includes farm laborers who harvest our produce under the summer's hot sun, the firefighters who battle bigger and less predictable forest fire, forest infernos, and the emergency responders sent out in the wake of major storms. Climate change is among the biggest emerging workplace hazards in the United States, one that can amplify existing health and safety issues 
and could lead to new unanticipated hazards. It is those unknown unknowns biting, uh, biting us in the ass. Okay, let's go look at some of these various bullshit climate talks. Wow, again, where is the no shit? Surely I haven't even I haven't even picked up the bullshit. Well, about that unprecedented four firefighters. Uh, other than that, I uh, haven't even picked up the bullshit detector button. Wow, U.S. to meet Paris Climate Pact target by one third. How? I thought one third of zero was zero. How is there such thing as one third of zero? Anyway, the United States will fall short by a third on its commitment under the Paris Climate Treaty to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions. Again, I, I have no fucking clue what they're talking about. The U.S. has no commitment under this bullshit Paris Climate Agreement. I have no idea what this reporter is smoking. Uh, I I anyway, well, all right. I'm moving on from that. The, uh, from that bullshit. Anyway, of course, here is the no shit Sherlock review of the Bangkok climate talks that uh, were last week. Just, just a. I'm, I'm just going to choose a couple of no shit Sherlock headlines. From Bangkok, Thailand. Wow. Bangkok meeting fails to finalize draft on climate change rules. An international meeting in Bangkok fell short of its aim of completing fruitful preparations. Fruitful preparations to help an agreement be reached in December. Uh, for implementing the 2015 Paris Climate Change Agreement. <clears throat> the six-day meeting was scheduled to step up progress in the battle against rising global carbon emissions. Hmm. Imagine that. It just didn't quite make it. Uh, talking about this unadulterated horseshit primary objective of the Paris Agreement was to limit global temperature increases by 2100 to less than 2 degrees C. Yes, but the absence of, of any progress for meeting that goal has led to fears that not enough action is being taken to keep the world from heating by 2 degrees C by the year 2100. Wow. There have been notable disagreements over financing for blah, 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 and the technical details, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Here, here we go. I love this one. As climate talks stall, UN chief presses world leaders to take action. If we do not change course by 2020, we risk missing the point where we can avoid runaway climate change. Anyway, from those unadulterated horseshit climate talks, let's come over to our own shithole country. Wow. EPA may slash methane restrictions. Hmm. The Environmental Protection Agency will soon propose plans to make it much easier for oil and gas companies to release methane, a potent greenhouse gas, 
into our atmosphere. Hmm, according to a report in the New York Times, yes, the newspaper citing agency documents that have not yet been made public said the EPA will propose loosening rules that mandate energy companies frequently inspect their oil and gas wells for methane leaks. Yes, the Interior Department is also expected to release its own proposal to remove bans on the flaring of methane at drilling rigs. Yes, while methane makes up only about 10% of those emissions, the gas is about 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide. Yep, yep. Uh, the rules would also allow energy operators in states with their own methane standards to abide by their own rules rather than federal guidelines. Yes, really. Okay, for the worse than previously thought headline of the day, there's all we got to have one, huh? Greenhouse gases from rice paddies may be twice, two times higher than previously thought, huh? <clears throat> the way some irrigated rice paddies are managed worldwide with cycles of flooding followed by dry periods may be leading to twice the planet warming greenhouse gas pollution as previously thought, researchers said Monday. <clears throat> Since rice is a major staple for at least half of the world's 7 billion people, the way rice is managed has significant effects on the Earth's warming climate said the report in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Uh, and so this, this study is actually looking at nitrous oxide, which is the what nobody is talking. I think nitrous oxide is basically laughing gas. So <clears throat> for this study, researchers took a closer look at emissions of nitrous oxide, a long-lasting atmospheric pollutant that is more potent than CO2 and methane. This shit is even more potent than methane. Yes. And so, wow. So, uh, rice patties releasing twice the amount of nitrous oxide than uh, previously thought. Alright, what is going on in Yellowstone National Park in the summer of 2018? Yellowstone hit by global warming. Uh, hotter, drier conditions have led to more severe wildfires in Yellowstone National Park while growing numbers of clueless fucking moron tourists have harmed everything from prized hydrothermal features to its famed grizzly bears, the park said in a report on Monday. Average temperatures in Yellowstone are exceeding historical norms even as climate change is blamed for a string of fires that have increased in size and which last longer, according to the study. Um, no shit. Okay, if climate trends continue along their current trajectory, fires within the park will continue to be larger and burn for longer duration. And you could say the same for Yosemite or Glacier. Or... Anyway, let's go over there to the shithole state of California. No shit, Sherlock. 
California running out of firefighting funds as blazes rage as California firefighters continue the battle against raging wildfires the state fire agency is running out of money to keep up the fight according to Cal Fire California has been hit with 5,491 wildfires so far this year, burning over 1.2 million acres. I'm not sure if this 1.2 million acres even takes into consideration acres on federal land in, uh, in California in which that figure would be much higher. Uh, the state uh, spent $432 million through the end of August, leaving just $11 million uh, in its annual budget. Uh, the CAL FIRE has asked state legislators for an additional $234 million of California taxpayers' money to keep up the fight. But uh, there is some good news uh, here. What is that billionaire Bill Gates doing? Bill Gates, along with Ban Ki-moon, to head climate body. <clears throat> Billionaire businessman and philanthropist. Warning, warning, bullshit, billionaire businessman and philanthropist Bill Gates, along with his buddy, former UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon, will head an international commission on climate change to launch next month. Uh Yes, the, the new commission to be co-hosted by the Global Center on Adaptation uh, seeks to, quote, convince countries across the globe to take measures to arm themselves against the consequences of climate change. So they're hiring Bill Gates to, uh, to save the planet let's see if gates has a no no comment from bill from that old philanthropist bill gates uh anyway guys i've mentioned this one before and i'm just going to wrap up here as uh, the waters continue to fall in the rivers in europe hunger stones Tell of century, tell centuries old tale of drought. Once an ominous harbinger of hard times and even famine due to critically low water levels, a massive, these massive hunger stones embedded deep in the Elba River have reappeared at the end of Europe's long dry summer. I've, I've mentioned this uh, already so uh, anyway they're finding more so there are now about 20 such boulders engraved with markers and dates going back centuries are being uh, revealed as warnings as doomsday prophecy warnings Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here, uh, and I'm going to come back, I, I mean, for part two of this, of my Doomer Roundup rants. Uh, I, I had like 40 stories to go over, would have nothing to do with climate change, uh, but I think I'm really just pretty much going to come back and read one story, which pretty much says it all. I think the story I chose yesterday was about the president of Tanzania telling women to throw their birth control pills 
uh, in the garbage. So today we're going to go over to the shithole country of Haiti to read the story Haitians Scour the Country's Largest Trash Dump. Coming up in one minute. Smoke them if you got them, and we all know why. Bye, guys.